Okay, what is the difference between a phrase and a sentence? I thought this could be an interesting topic. Following the video we did about clause and sentence, I strongly recommend you watch my video on what is the difference between clause and sentence before you watch this video. So, but anyways, before I start, if you're a speaker of French or Spanish or even probably Portuguese and similar languages, you have the word phrase in those languages. For example, in French, the word phrase is spelled exactly the same as phrase in English, but it means sentence. And in Spanish and Portuguese, you need to be careful to make sure what does phrase mean? Is it a false friend with the word phrase in English or not? So, but it would be interesting to know that even in English, people might call any sequence of words a phrase, not necessarily a sentence in English. Now with that out of the way, I can start talking about phrase and sentence. In linguistic, a phrase has a more precise meaning. There's different ways in which you can define a phrase. A phrase is obviously any group of words that form a constituent and is part of a clause. And when I say that, in the five level hierarchy in syntax, the highest level is sentence and clause, then phrase, then word, and then morpheme. So as you can see here, phrase is two levels below sentence. Phrases become part of clauses and clauses constitute sentences. So that's one way to look at phrases. But what does this mean exactly to us? So according to the model, the sentence is the highest level and it's the biggest structured unit. Then we have clauses. But for the purposes of this video, let's limit our discussion to simple sentences which is a, a simple sentence is basically a clause, a sentence that consists of one clause. And what is a clause? A clause is a unit of grammatical organization that is smaller than a sentence, but larger than a phrase. But more importantly, a clause has a subject and a predicate. And the predicate is the verb with all its dependence. So let me give you some examples that we actually covered. John is running, the subject is John, and then the predicate is is running john is running so this is a clause this is a sentence like anything from lock to drawer lock the lap her laptop in a secure drawer is the predicate then lydia is the subject so these are examples of a sentence so it's important to know that the verb in a predicate is finite what is the what is finite uh, finite means it's not an, not an infinitive. For example, if I say to be, that's not finite because it's not been constrained for subject and tense. So to be, if you just say to be, that's infinitive. You see the opposite of finite. So what is a phrase now? So this is a good way to now move on to phrase. A phrase is a group of words that combine logically to form a constituent. So they are constituents within clauses, and in this case, within the sentence. But they do not express a complete thought. So typically, a phrase consists of more than one word. And it doesn't have the subject predicate structure of a clause. A phrase is abbreviated to P. So in a sentence, you can have an MP, noun phrase, PP, prepositional phrase, VP, verb phrase, etc. We have to cover these in this videos about syntax. So as you see here, in the same way that a word has a category, a phrase also has a category. Of course, a sentence itself is also a syntactic category, but that's like the biggest syntactic category. So that's why we called it the largest unit of grammatical organization. So, well, because I use the word constituent, constituent means they are a single syntactic category, syntactic entity, and can be moved around together, but not if broken apart. Now let me give you some examples of phrase. The man went down the hill. The man is a phrase. You see, it is a noun phrase. Down the hill is a prepositional phrase. And they are a constituent. They have a category label, which is prepositional phrase. You can move them around. But what is a sentence? The man went down the hill. The entire string is a sentence. As you see, I can move down the hill, which is a phrase. I can say down the hill went the man. So if I say you said such things, that is a sentence. 
But if I say, for you to say such things, this is not a sentence. Why isn't it the sentence? Because the subject predicate uh, structure is not there. You might say, oh, when you say you to say you is the subject, but the verb here is not finite. It hasn't been assigned a subject and a tense. So to say is infinitive. So for you to say such things is actually a noun phrase. So I can actually, I can use this as, as a subject for the sentence. You see, for you to say such things is a noun phrase which is used as a subject of the sentence. So the predicate is, is foolish and cruel. A phrase may have, may contain more phrases inside it. So a phrase may be made up of more phrases. For example, Barbara handed the intriguing results of the latest examination to Alan. So the intriguing results of the latest examination is a noun phrase. But within the noun phrase, you have of the latest examination, which is a prepositional phrase. So this is what I meant when I said you might have a phrase inside a phrase. So you have a phrase of the latest examination, prepositional phrase, which is part of the intriguing results of the latest examination. Both together form a bigger uh, unit, which is a noun phrase. And then you have two separate prepositional phrases, which is to Alan, and then you have on Tuesday. You see the intriguing results of the latest examination, that is a phrase. You can replace it with the results, and then you can replace it with them. In syntactic analysis, them is a still a noun phrase. So in everyday language, a phrase is usually more than a word. So question. Where do you live? What is it? Is it a sentence or phrase? It is a sentence. But if I answer in Toronto, that's a phrase. But if I say I live in Toronto, that would be a sentence again. But the phrase in Toronto would be part of the sentence.